Hey all you addicts out there, welcome back to another Addicted Fishing Tutorial. My name is Jordan Kinnigan. If you guys are new to this channel, be sure to go down here and hit that subscribe button and hit that little bell notification. We're Addicted Fishing. We all have all kinds of educational, inspirational, and a lot of entertainment from us fishing all over the world. Today we're having a little bit of an educational piece. We're going to go over talking about the best way to keep salmon eggs on the hook. So if you guys want to learn more about egg knots and how to put your eggs on the hook, stay tuned, coming at you right now. So first and foremost, when you're talking about eggs in general, you wanna go over what makes a good egg. A lot of the things that make a good egg, one is the consistency of the egg, how well it hangs together and how well the skein keeps those berries on, and two is the cure that you put on your eggs. For all different salmon species and all different salmon types, there's different cures and there's different styles of eggs that you wanna use. So as you're playing around with egg cures and you're trying to find the different styles of cure for different runs of fish, I really like to go with any of the ProCure products. They're really my favorite because they have so many different avenues of their cures and a lot of some of their premier cures are a lot of different mixtures and different things that they've come up with over 30 years of fishing that really kind of key in on certain bites on certain fisheries, whether they be salmon, steelhead, fall, spring, so on and so forth. So going through and checking out a lot of those ProCure products and finding the ones suited for each each season is going to help you maximize the efficiency of the eggs that you're using if you're lucky enough to get eggs to use yourself. Anything other than that, any of the store-bought cures, any of the Nate's baits or any of the, along the lines all the way up and down throughout the country, eggs that you can find and buy off the shelf work just as well, um, but they're already cured in certain different kinds of cures that is relative to that brand. So having good eggs is what's really going to be key. Finding something that has medium-sized berries to bigger-sized berries with a real heavy skein, and I'll show you what I mean by the skein as I go into putting these eggs on the hook and showing you your egg loop is going to be key in, in having efficiency and using those eggs. So what we're going to do first and what the main thing that this whole video is about as you could tell in the title is how we're going to keep our eggs on the hook. So what I have here next to me is a 2 aught Mustad bait hook basically just a fine wire bait hook. I like the fine wire in this model, whether it be two, three, or four aught, mainly because of the, the very thing that it says in its name is that fine wire to it. It's very sharp point, and that being that it's that fine wire um, steel, when the fish bites, it has more prevalence in poking all the way through its skin and all the way into that hard mouth of the salmon than a big, thick, heavy bait hook would, being that there's not as much sharp edge because of the bulk of that wire. So these fine wire hooks are one of my favorites that I've found over the last couple years. A lot of times I feel like the flex in them and the way that they bend around a little bit in the fish's mouth to actually help you land more fish, being that that fish can't just roll off of that hook when it does its cartwheels or its, its crocodile rolls underneath the surface of the water. So two out must add side water, or excuse me, must add bait hook is what I have here in the fine wire model. What I have here also is the SS fluorocarbon and a 15 pound. If you're fishing for big Chinook, whether it be spring or fall, you're gonna go a little bit heavier than 15 pounds. Um, but I'm gonna use the 15 pound just for this tutorial to kind of get the gist for you guys so you can see how to tie this bait loop so it's easy for you to see. Um, what I'm gonna start with here is, uh, say I'm using a typical leader that I'm gonna use on a bait setup. Normally you're not gonna want it over about three to five feet. If you're using a five foot leader, what happens is your weight goes down to whatever depth you have it set as, which you can see a lot of this stuff if you guys aren't really familiar with the things that I'm talking about now and a lot of our other bait fishing tutorials or bobber fishing 101 that we just came out with recently. So be sure to go back onto that YouTube channel, Addicted Fishing, and look at some of the other tutorials so that you can see the gist of the way you're gonna be fishing this method after I show you how to just get the eggs on the hook. So I'm gonna use about a three foot leader here. That's gonna be just enough for me here to get the job done and show you guys. And also it's a good length to be fishing if you're fishing any kind of bait setup for salmon or steelhead. So what I have here, with my fine wire hook and my 15 pound is all the things you need to get a good bait loop going. So there's a couple different bait loops out there. We have some tutorials where Cameron shows you one of his favorite bait loops. I'm gonna show you one of mine and it's my favorite because of the efficiency and the quickness of it. It's a lot easier to tie, it doesn't take as long and when you're out on the river or if you're at home on the couch tying up these leaders before you go fishing, it's quick and easy and it's painless and you get the job done and you're back fishing or going to bed, whatever it might be that evening. So what I've done here is I've put my wire, or my, my 15 pound test right through the eye of the hook lengthwise with the shank, parallel with the shank, all the way down. I'm gonna leave myself about a six to an eight inch tag end here. 
Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold the line and the hook right at the bend of the shank, just like so. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab that tag end that I stuck through the eye. I'm gonna bring it back down and into my fingers, into my fingertips that I'm holding onto the shank of the hook with. I'm gonna pull myself down a little bit of a loop there. So right now, this is what I have. I have my loop, I have my tag end, and I'm holding that loop in between the shank and my fingers there. Now what I'm gonna do, and this is why I think this method is so quick and easy, because it takes minimal wraps and it takes minimal effort to get this thing going, like you saw, is I'm gonna take, and if I'm using a heavier pound test and I'm, and I'm gonna be fishing a big bait of eggs, I'm gonna do about 10 to 15 wraps on that shank. So be sure to give yourself a long tag end so that you don't run out of room to stick back and do that final step and I'm gonna show you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and what I'm doing here is I'm putting over the top of the shank of the hook, going over and around, and I'm holding it in between my middle finger and my thumb each time I fold it over. So I'm gonna go around again, I'm gonna hold it just like so, around again, hold it just like so. That's about five, six wraps. I'm gonna go eight, nine, 12, 13, 14. Sounds like an awesome number to end on today. So what I'm gonna do now that I have that all created there, I have all those wraps along the shank of the hook. I have my tag end all the way up here by my index finger. Push that down really quick because I'm getting away from myself. What I'm gonna do now that I have my wraps all done is I'm gonna take that tag in, I'm gonna stick it back through the loop that I created at the beginning of this knot, just like so. So now what I have is I have my wraps, I have it all the way around, stuck back through the loop I created, and then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna either hold this with pliers or my teeth, just like so, and I'm gonna pull the leader end of this all the way until I feel it go tight. Just like so. And now what I have here, as you can tell, is a perfectly functional egg loop. And what that's gonna do, as you can see here, is it leaves that little gap in between the, the eye of the hook and the knot that I've created on that shank, is that you're gonna, I'm gonna tag, cut my tag end here first. But what that allows me to do is it allows me to push that line back and through the eye of the hook and create this nice little loop that I'm gonna put the eggs in. So. Now that I have that, I'm gonna grab my eggs, again, cured and pro-cure. And what I talked about earlier about a skein is, is what you see here. You see how this has this nice membrane on the back side of this skein of eggs, on this bait of eggs, I should say, and the bottom side is the actual exposed berries held together by that skein. What I always like to do is I like to fold that skein over to where I got just the back of the skein that I'm gonna hook into. I don't wanna hook into the raw berries because those won't hold on like that skein will. So what I'm gonna do, I have it folded in half. This is a perfect little coho bait or a salmon bait, depending on where you're fishing. I'm gonna take that shank of the hook, or the point of the hook, excuse me. I'm gonna put it through both ends of that membrane that are exposed by the end of that, by folding that skein over. And now what I'm gonna do, is a little trick that also is on our YouTube channel. Cameron has a little tutorial on it. Is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put this loop all the way around to the bottom end of that shank, covering up the entirety of those eggs. I'm gonna pull that tight and I'm gonna do a double. So now that I've got half of that line pulled onto that, I'm gonna do a little twist here, just like so. And I'm gonna add another wrap around those eggs, which is gonna ensure that those eggs aren't going anywhere. I'm gonna slowly pull that tight. And what's key is once you have those eggs secured in that egg loop, is to not pull them all the way tight. What'll happen, even, if, even with the best eggs imaginable, if you pull that line too tight right off the bat, it's gonna cut through that skein. You're gonna to go to cast and those eggs are gonna fly across the river farther than your float will. So, now that I have that set, I'm gonna pull it just taut enough to where it's holding onto the line. And there it is, everybody. There's your perfect little bait of eggs. And you see if you have the right size hook with the right amount of bait, the, the eggs almost completely cover up that hook so that you can't even tell that it's there. And that's kind of key in that egg loop is to get those eggs to stick right on the back side of that shank so that they're not interfering with the hook point, yet they're kind of disguising that hook so that those fish aren't really seeing it very well as it's coming down to them, especially if you're in a pressured situation. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's how easy it is to keep those hooks full of eggs every time you're casting. So, if you guys have any questions, be sure to go down here and comment below. If you have a different style of egg loop, be sure to go ahead and comment and leave a little link to a description or, or some kind of uh, maybe other YouTube channel that has some of these egg loops out here. But this is the most quick and efficient and easy to use egg loop that I know of and it's the one that gets me fish every single day. So, if you guys liked what you saw here today, once again, go down here and comment, hit that little like, 
hit that bell notification so you can see all our other tutorials coming out every single day. You guys stay fishy, we'll see you out there on the river. Mm -hmm.